Okay, so after you've equilibrated your case, um, in all excursions, in working, balancing, and protrusive, you, we need to fabricate a face bow uh, remount jig. And that's simply done by removing the lower mounting and only having the upper uh, denture in the articulator still. If you've deviated away from zero, you want to put this back away, back to zero, pardon me, and make sure everything is in a secure position as far as all the pins are concerned. So from this point on, we need to uh, make a plaster jig here that will preserve the position of this acrylic base in relation to the condyles of the articulator. And you can do it a number of ways. First of all, you need an extra mounting ring. So we'll place a new mounting ring on the lower member of the articulator, just like so. And you can use a couple of methods to um, fabricate your jig. The easiest way is to use a paper cup and cut it in a way, as I've done here. So the bottom of the paper cup, obviously the bottom of the paper cup is removed, and it's, it's cut somewhat so this fits over the ring. This is a little bit tight, so what I'm gonna do, I've initially cut the paper cup like so. I'll show you here. So you wanna cut off the bottom of the paper cup, and you can see that the blade fits right through there. So you wanna cut that all around. and cut it as low as possible, depending on the size of the paper cup that you use. And see if that fits snug around the ring. It doesn't right now. It's a little bit too narrow in compared to the diameter of the ring. So you can take a pair of scissors and continue to cut the paper cup, I'd say in about maybe two, three millimeter increments and see if that allows the cup to fit around the ring. Because every time you cut it a little bit shorter, because of the conical shape of the paper cup, the diameter gets a little bit wider and wider and wider as you cut it shorter. You need to go a little bit more. Try to cut the paper cup as parallel to the rim of the paper cup as possible. So I'm always relating my cut in relation to the rim of the cut. So what I'm doing here is parallel to the top of the cut. Still gotta go a little bit more. I can certainly wedge it, squeeze it in there, but I just want a nice snug fit. Try that again, almost there, actually it is there. So a little bit on the loose side, I might have gone a little bit too much, but it's not the end of the world, it's fine. Um, the other thing is we need to cut the top of the paper cup so it's just below the height of the teeth. And the easiest way to do that is to make a little mark on the side of the articulator, as I've done here, just a little mark here that gives me the height of the teeth. You can do that, certainly do that on both sides. And then you can place the paper cup back over the mounting ring, close the articulator, and just transfer that height over to the cup and conveniently it worked out to be on that line that's on there on the cup already but you can certainly make that line all the way around if you don't have that you can initiate that opening with your blade and then finish it off 
with a pair of scissors. So I'll cut that all around. And that should be very close to the height to match the teeth. So I'll place that back on here, close my articulator, and now the paper cup height is almost at the height of the teeth. If you're a little bit below or a little bit above, it's not a big deal. If you don't have a paper cup, so I'm gonna set this one aside. If you don't have a paper cup, you can use two sheets of base plate wax. So I'm gonna soften each piece and then tag them together. Okay. Through experience, I know that I'm gonna need about, about one and a third. So I'll go about one and a half or so. It's okay to go a little more than what you need. This you can use, you can put back in your wax cut. And I'm gonna soften this piece somewhat over the butts and burner that you don't see on camera right now. And one thing when you're starting to fold is keep in mind that this paper cup works well because it's a conical shape, right? So the top of the paper cup is a little bit wider than the bottom. So when I do this part, I want to fold it in a way that reproduces that cone shape. So that means I have to fold it like so to make the top of the fold wider than the bottom of the fold, okay? Question becomes how wide or how narrow do you make it to ensure that you have a snug fit over the paper cup? Well, through trial and error, I think you'll you'll find your way, and of course it also depends on the type of base plate you're using, wax base plate you're using, and the size, obviously. So I think I'm gonna start with that, and I'm gonna take a font stock and just seal that seam here so it doesn't come apart on me. So even though I have a little excessive wax here, it's not, it's not a big issue to, to leave it like that. You don't have to cut it exactly to where one starts and the other finishes. Just gonna seal that very quickly. And I'll seal it a little bit on the inside as well so everything stays together. Okay, so once I have a basic shape, and I think we can see there that it's, it is a bit of a cone shape, so the top will be wider than the bottom, just like we had with the cup here, paper cup. I'm gonna cut the bottom of the wax, and I might have gone a little bit on the wide side, but that's okay. I'm gonna cut the bottom of the wax, So it gives me a nice flat surface. And as I'm doing that, what you don't see off camera, I'm gently heating my, my blade so it's easy to, to cut through the wax. Just like that. Okay, now at this point, let's see how this fits over the ring. We can certainly remove the top portion of the articulator so it's easier to work with. And I'm pretty close. I need to cut it a little bit more.
Okay. So as I'm cutting it shorter and shorter, the base of the wax gets wider and wider, and it should fit over the ring a little bit easier, I'm hoping. A little bit more. And I think I still have enough height so I can cut some of this base some more. And let's see how that fits over the ring now. And if anything, you can stretch the wax over a little bit, right? Just trying to stretch the wax a little bit. See if I can get a better luck to trying to get it fitted over the ring. There we go. So that fits over the ring nicely. And once again, you want to place the top portion of the articulator, lock everything into centric. Close the articulator and again having the little marker on the side here I'm just going to make a little mark on the wax just heat up my instrument right about here so now I can remove this again and I can cut now according to that little mark and now all I got to do is stay parallel to the base of the wax so I'm just gonna make my way around and hopefully I have enough height. It looks like I do, I just made it. If you happen to be a bit short, you can certainly build up the height with the plaster because we're gonna mix it relatively thick, not too thin. So it's not gonna run all over the place. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's place it back around the ring. Make sure there are no wax shavings in here because we're going to introduce some plaster. Place it back over the ring. Close the articulator. And now the wax is almost at the height. So take note if you're a little bit high or a little bit short. Or if you're a little bit high, I would cut it a little bit short so you can build up your plaster accordingly. So. You can either use a wax wafer, obviously it takes a little longer to produce, but if you don't have enough paper cups lying around where you're working, you can certainly use the wafer. So I'm gonna go back to the paper cup. And I'm going to wedge the paper cup around the ring Take another look. Maybe shift it around to make sure you have full support of all the teeth. And again, this one looks like it's a little bit shorter than the height of the teeth. So when I start introducing the plaster in here, I'm gonna go slightly higher than the top of the paper cup. So I got some plaster ready in the bowl. Um, you probably wanna mix about two cups worth of plaster. Relatively uh, uh, thick mix. Need some more water. And try to spatulate things over the vibrator. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna hand spatulate for now. Good half a minute of spatulation. Get everything in a nice smooth consistency. And now I'm gonna introduce some plaster inside the 
form. But be sure not to put too much initially, just a little bit, because you want that plaster to make it all the way down the undercut of the ring, the mounting ring. It's got a little undercut in here. I'm not hitting the articulator. I'm, I'm hitting the plastic portion of the ring just to vibrate it into position, right? And the rest of it is rather simple. We're just going to pour our plaster right into our mold and gently vibrate. And of course, I don't have enough plaster. And that's okay, you got lots of time. We're just gonna mix another little batch. Because the plaster hasn't set in my bowl, I can use the same bowl. I don't need to clean my bowl very quickly. Just mix another batch. Hopefully the same consistency. and top it off. And if you recall, I need to go a little bit higher than the height of the paper cup to make sure that I, the teeth are embedded within the plaster about two millimeters or so. Okay, so that's good. Pour some more plaster. Wet my spatula a little bit. I think I'm at the correct height. Make a nice flat surface with a wet spatula. And I'm going to close the articulator slowly. And as I'm doing this, I want to make sure that I have enough imprint of the teeth within the plaster, but not bury the teeth so excessively. So it might present a hard time removing things apart after. So I think I did a pretty good job by just embedding about two, three millimeters worth of the, um, the um, anatomical crown, sorry, the clinical crown of the tooth that we see past the gingival line. So it's about a third, I would say, just short of a third of the length of the tooth embedded inside the plaster. We're gonna let that set for a good 20, 30 minutes, and then we'll be able to remove it and clean it up a little bit.